Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this today's session on hair braid or weaver. And today's topics are disorders of the hair and scalp, hair loss, and hair braiding. So at the end of this session, you should be able to recognize hair and scalp disorders mainly seen in the salon and know which one can be treated there. Discuss the different types of hair loss and their causes and describe the treatment option for hair loss. I am your presenter, Kiwana Harris Johnson. Now the first hair loss that sorry, the first hair disorder that we will be looking at is called canopies. You may be asking yourself, what is canopies? But canopies is actually the technical term for gray hair. So gray hair is caused by the loss of the natural pigment of the hair. Pigment is the color matter that in the hair. Pigment gives the hair its color. We have two types of canopies, congenital canopies and acquired canopies. Congenital canopies is the canopies that is existed from birth, before birth, it's there. You're born with it, meaning you're born without color matter in your hair or pigment. So we have congenital, congenital canopies, and it mostly occurs in albinos. And I know our Jamaican dialect, we call them dundus, is a person born without any color matter. Then we have acquired canopies. Due to, it's caused by due to old age, stress, anxiety, worry, nervous strain, a prolonged illness can also cause gray hair. Back up back to um, congenital canopies. The treatment for, for um, canopies would be to color the hair, but persons who are born without color matter, it's going to be a problem to color their hair. As we move on, we're going to look at ring hair. Now, ring hair is an alternate band of gray and dark hair mixed together. So if your hair is black and it's mixed with, with gray hair, you have, that's called gray, ring hair. Then we have hypertrichosis, and this is the superfluous hair on your body. So for example, if you look on your body, you will notice that you will see some fine downy hair all over your body. Those hair are called vellus hair. Now, what will happen in hypotrichosis is that vellus hair will turn into terminal hair. What are terminal hair? Terminal hair are the long hair that exists on your head, on your, under your arm, and also on your pubic area. Now, the treatment for this will be to tweeze, wax, use the pillitaries, example, near, beard, or beat, and electrolysis, you can shave it, and so forth. Then we have trichapillosis. Now, this is a technical term for splitting. Basic treatment, you're going to lubricate it. You can use um, oils, you can use, and you can do a deep conditioning treatment, and also, so deep conditioning treatment to soften the ends, or you can just cut it off. The best treatment for me for split ends is to just cut it off and let the hair grow back fresh. I, then we have trichodosa. Now this is called knotted hair. This is caused by the hair being dry and brittle, and it forms nodular swells along the hair shaft. Meaning you can take a, a, a shop of, um, sorry, a shop of your hair, just take it one strand and just look at it, and you will notice if you, you're not going to be able to see it with a naked eye, but if you look under a microscope, you will notice that there are like scale like things on the hair shop. Now, this will cause swelling between the nods on the hair shop, and the nods will break and look like a brush, like brush out. Most persons, you would think it's just splitting, but no, it's not splitting. It's actually knotted hair. Now, what will happen is that you, the hair fiber will just start to spread. And this will spread along the hair shaft, and eventually the hair will just break off. So the treatment for this will be to soften the hair with conditioners and moisturizers. 
a deep conditioning treatment, again, using a dryer or a steamer. Then we have Molyneltric, and this is breaking, or the beads within the hair shaft starts to break and split. What is actually happening now, you have to go in and do a scalp and conditioning treatment. Also, you have what is called fragilus dyscranium, and this is a brittle hair that is caused by splitting, and the hair will split along the hair shaft, and also a treatment for this will be hair and scalp treatment. As I said before, use your deep conditioner, place your client under the dryer or a steamer so that it can be able to open the cuticles and your moisture will go in and help to solve your problem. Then we have, in summary, so we're gonna sum up all that we just said about hair disorder. So all those hair disorders that I just mentioned, you can treat them in the salon. So we have canities, and we know canities is a technical term for gray hair. We have two types of canities, congenital canities and acquired canities. We have ring hair, that's the alternative band of black and black and gray hair mixing together. Then we have hypotrichosis, and this is superfluous hair, meaning your vellus hair turn into long hair and grown all over your body. We have trichinodosa, this is swelling along the hair shaft, causing it to break into brush like brush-like, and it will split along the hair shaft. So you need deep conditioning treatment to solve this problem. Molyneltrix is breaking between the nods or the beads on the hair shaft. Deep conditioning treatment again. And then we have fragilastis cranium, the hair shaft being splitting, and you need deep conditioning treatment again. I do hope you got all those. Make sure you're taking your notes make sure you're jotting down important points. Then we are going to scalp disorders. So scalp disorders are your dandruff, vegetable parasitic infection, animal parasitic infection, and streptococci infection. We're going to zoom in first on dandruff. And we don't want you to mix dandruff up with the natural shedding of the scales that is on the scalp. Now, dandruff, or the technical term for dandruff is pitriasis. Pitriasis, it's a white, small white scales that appear on the scalp of the hair. Its characteristic is excessive shedding and accumulation of the surface cells. Then we have two types of dandruff. Yes, there are two main types of dandruff. We have the dry type of dandruff, and the technical term for that is pitriasis capitis simplex. It's itchy scalp and small white flakes attached to the scalp and it's scattered loosely on the hair. What is the cause of this? It's caused by a sluggish scalp, meaning poor blood circulation, lack of nerve stimulation. So this now, you need to start massaging the client's Scalp. So a person comes in for a scalp for a dandruff treatment when you recognize that it's pitriasis, pitriasis capitis simplex, you are going to include in your treatment a massage, a scalp massage to help the blood circulation and the nerve stimulation. Improper diet is also a cause of this emotional and glandular disturbance. So if your hormones are out of whack, it can cause you to have dandruff and also poor hygiene. Not shampooing your hair on a regular basis will cause dandruff too. And remember, dandruff is caused also by a bacteria. Remember that. So bacteria that is present on your scalp, we call it um, by the name of malaysia, helps to cause dandruff. The, not, the next type of dandruff is called pitriasis pedoides. Now, this is the greasy type of dandruff. Now, a person can, sorry, pitri, let's go back to pitriasis capitis simplex. If you notice the treatment for pitriasis capitis simplex, some medicated shampoo, scalp ointment, or scalp 
scalp tonic, scalp lotion, medicated ointment, regular scalp massage. Those are the treatments for pitriasis capitis simplex. Reason why I went back is because pitriasis sedoides should not be treated in the salon. You can treat pitriasis capitis simplex in the salon, but not pitriasis sedoides. Now, pitriasis sedoides is the waxy or the greasy type of dandruff. It scales mixed with the sebum, causing them to stick to the scalp in patches. You may be asking yourself, what, what is sebum or what are sebum? What is this thing? Well, sebum is actually the, the oil that is secreted from your oil glands to help to lubricate your scalp. So it's mixed with the overactive sebum will cause problems. An inactive sebum will also cause problems. So your sebum mixed with the oils here, sorry, overactive sebaceous glands that your oil glands will cause problems. Now, the treatment for this client must be referred to a physician. You do not treat the triasis sedoides in the salon. It's both type of dangerous or highly contagious. So whatever you use on pitriasis skeptic simplex, whatever comb, brushes, towel, whatever it is that you use on my client should not be used on another client without being sanitized. Remember, fresh, clean towel should be placed on each client at every use. So you sanitize all your implements or your, your tools that you use. Make sure that even the chair that the client sat on should be sanitized because dandruff will fly. Good? So, then we are at vegetable parasitic infection. Now, vegetable parasitic infection, tinea, is the technical term for ringworm. It's caused by a vegetable parasite. And as we know what a parasite is, a parasite is someone or something that lives on another. It's a living being that lives on another living organism and gets its food and nourishment and everything from that living being. So, wingworm is a parasite. Yes, it is a parasite. It's highly contagious. It's the, the shape of it is like a round, small, red patches or blisters. You should refer the client to a physician or rub the blue on it. Remember, we're not going to rub any blue on it. You cannot just treat wingworm topically. Wingworm should be treated from inside. So you're going to go to the physician to get medication to treat wingworm. There are many types of wingworm, but we're just going to zoom in on two types now. So these are some wingworm that you might see. We do not treat wingworm in the salon. Wingworm, persons with wingworm should be referred to a physician. And I will not stop stressing. Refer the person to a physician. We have tinea capitis. This is wingworm of the scalp. What is going to happen, these red little puffules are going to go to the open of the follicle. The follicle is where the hair will grow. So it's going to break the hair and no hair will grow there. So you're going to send your client to a physician. Good. The next way, the next step is tinea. Hold on a minute. Tinea favosa. Now tinea favosa is the only shape wingworm. It's dry. It's sulfur yellow. It's pop like crust on the scalp called puscular. Now this gives an odor. It smells really bad. And it's scars, it's white, it comes in patches, it's highly contagious, and it should not be treated in the salon. You refer your clients to the physician. So those are the two types of vegetable parasitic infections. Wingworm that I'll be talking about today because they are the main type that you will see in the salon. I will also mention the barber itch, and this is wingworm of the beard. So you might see that one also in the in the salon. That wingworm should also be referred to the physician. Remember, wingworm is highly contagious. So if you had, you did an analysis on a client 
or consultation with Ringworm, make sure you sanitize your hands and anything that you use within the consultation. Then we have your animal parasitic infections. So we have our animal parasitic infections and we have scabies and it's the it mite and it's highly contagious. What is that for is that this small insect will bury itself under your skin and cause um, um, pustules or small blisters along your skin. It's highly contagious. You should not um, attempt to treat this person with um with scabies you should refer this person to a physician also we also have pedilocosis capitis and this is an infestation of head lice no it's highly contagious also and head lice cause itching and it cause infection to occur so you're going to refer the client to a physician we do not treat animal parasitic infections in the salon we do not treat vegetable parasitic infections in the salon. They should be referred to a physician. Then we have our streptococci infections. So your streptococci infection, as um, you might not know what is streptococci. Streptococci is a bacteria that causes pus to form. So as long as this bacteria is present, pus will be present, and it is a harmful bacteria. It's a pathogenic bacteria coming from the group called cocci. So this is a pus-forming bacteria. So on the cocci infections, we have furuncle. Furuncle is another name for boil. It's acute streptococci infection at the hair follicles. It causes pain. It produces muscles. It produce, It causes the hair to, to fall out. You should refer the client to a physician. Maybe you have experienced a boil in your day or two. Then we have carabuncle. Now carabuncle is bigger than a boil or bigger than a furuncle and it's inflammation of the subcutaneous tissue. Now this is inflammation of the fatty tissue that lies under the dermis. So it's caused by streptococci, that's a bacteria, and it's as I said, it's bigger than a furuncle. You should refer the client to a physician. So before we move on, we are going to look at the summary. In order to give your clients the best possible um, consultative services, you must be able to recognize the hair and scalp disorder conditions that need treatment. Remember, you can treat all of your hair disorders that was mentioned in these sessions, but you cannot treat all the animal, sorry, all the scalp disorder that's in the session. The only one can be treated in the salon is pitriasis capitis simplex. That's the only one, that's a dry type of dandruff. All the others, the client must be referred to a physician. So that's it on hair disorder and scalp disorder. So we are going to move into hair loss. Many of you may be wondering, what is hair loss? Well, hair loss is the abnormal loss of your hair. And the technical term for hair loss is alopecia. You may have heard this term a lot, but the technical term for hair loss is alopecia. You have different types of hair loss, but we're going to be zooming on on the most common ones are the ones that you will most likely to see in the salon. So the most common types are androgenic alopecia, alopecia errata, postmortem alopecia, and you also have traction alopecia. Now, oh, a lot of persons trouble or suffer from abnormal hair loss. So let's zoom in and let's learn some more about hair loss, okay? Now, hair loss, 
may it's it's emotional impact on clients. So studies have shown that persons with hair loss think that they are less attractive, they are less assertive, they are not successful, and their personal person persons that think that they may not be likable. The first one that we'll be looking at is androgenic alopecia. Now, androgenic alopecia is a combination of hereditary and hormones and age causing progressive shrinking of the militarization of the thermal hair. And remember earlier, I told you what are thermal hair. Now, thermal hair is, your, is the long hair that is on your head. Now, androgenic alopecia is caused mostly by hereditary. So if you look through your family and you notice that your father is losing his hair, your mother may have lost her hair, or you notice that your brother is losing his hair. Now, it's mostly commonly called male pattern baldness, you know, that U-shape, that you would say man with a U-shape right in here and all of them here falling out from the middle until it reached the front. Yes, yeah, so androgenic alopecia is normally from you inherited, you inherited from persons in your family, from your mother's side or your father's side. So this alopecia can be can begin in your teens. So you can be very young when you start and it's frequent up to age 40. And by 35, almost 40% of men and women show some degree of hair loss. Genes can be inherited either side of your family. So you can get it from your mother's side or your father's side. So maybe you are thinking, why is my hair falling out, the middle of my hair falling out? So check on your parents' side of the family, each side of the family, to see if there's anyone there losing their hair also. So it's called androgenic alopecia. It's from your genes. Let's go on. Then we have alopecia errata. Now, alopecia errata is the sudden falling out of hair in round or irregular patches or shapes. It may occur anywhere on the body. So you can, it may occur on your back, hand, your head, anywhere on your body. Can It's, it's normally like the attack. Your immune system is now attacking the follicles and every hair on your body has follicles, right? So if the immune system would now start to attack your follicles, it may begin to begin with one small patch until more, until a complete ball patch. If progressed or if it's not treated, it can be it can cause total loss, total scalp hair loss, which is called alopecia totally meaning all the hair on your scalp will be gone. And if not treated, it can cause complete body hair loss. So every hair for your body ever gone. And this is called alopecia universalis. Remember, alopecia errata is your immune system attacking your follicle. You should go to a physician. It occurs in males and females of all ages and races. Can or can be begin from childhood. The scalp shows no sign of inflammation, and there is no obvious skin disorder or disease. It's just sudden. It's something that happens suddenly to you or to your client. So you would refer. So when you're doing your your consultation and your hair analysis. These are some of the things that you will be looking for. You can look at your scalp to note if there is any irregular patches or any circle patches where there is no hair there. So that's androgenic alopecia. Then we have postpartum alopecia. Now this is the temporary hair loss at the conclusion of pregnancy. Many women may face women may face this. One. So what will happen is that the growth cycle will normally return. So there is a change in the hormones. So there is going to be a change in your growth cycle. The hair goes through three cycles, anagen, telogen, and catogen, with anagen being the growth cycle, telogen being your transitional cycle, 
um, pathogen being your resting cycle. So when you get pregnant, your hormones go through a lot of things. It's at an up down. So when you when you have your baby, then your hormones will be going back to normal. So some women may experience hair loss, postpartum hair loss, and it may last for a year. It may last for a year, or it may last for a year, or it may last for two years, but eventually your hair will go back to its normal hair growth cycle. Some treatments for hair loss, you can take monoxyl, and it's a topical medication that you're going to apply to the scalp twice daily. Daily, sorry, it's proven to stimulate the hair growth, and it will help to strengthen the hair, and help. there is no known side effects. And then we have um, finasterate, and this is an oral prescription for men only. This pres prescription should not be given to women, and women should not come near this prescription or this pill because this pill will cause um, infertility in women. The side effects include weight loss, weight gain, and loss of sexual function. Then that's the summary and that's it for hair loss. So let's run back through it. Let's go over, let's make sure that we learn something. So if there's anything that I miss, we are going to just do a recap so we will know exactly what is it and what is hair loss so we will know. So remember hair loss, we have um, hair loss, technical term for it is called alopecia. We have different types of hair loss. We have androgenic alopecia. We have um, alopecia errata. We have postmortem alopecia. And I also mentioned traction alopecia, but I did not elaborate on it. Now, traction alopecia, as the name suggests, traction, meaning that the hair breaks in traction. So persons that do um, does a lot of braids, cornrows, stuff like that, they may experience traction alopecia. Oh, yes. Yeah. So then we have two proven treatments. We talk about them. We talk about minoxil, and that's a topical treatment. And we talk about finasterate, and that's an oral pill that men take and women should not go close to it because it will cause infertility within women. So that's it for disorders of the scalp and hair, hair loss and hair treatment. So we're going to go straight on over now to hair braiding. So hope you're gear up and hope you're ready. So we're gonna go we're moving right along. If I did not cover any questions or you have some form of questions, feel free to email us at M. Feel free to e email us, right? And we will sort it out and get the answer for you. Okay, so we are moving straight right along into hair braider. So at the end of this lesson, we discussed the hair extension used in hair braiding, know the tools and material used in hair braiding, explain how to prepare the hair for braiding, and demonstrate procedures for different braiding techniques. Okay, let's move right along. So you know for every service that we perform in the salon, we are going, right, to consult. Many persons' um, options are they don't do this, uh, this part of it. But consultation gives you an idea of exactly what the client wants. You allow the client to express themselves, and it will make and build confidence with you and between you and your clients. Follow the guides. Make sure that you focus on what the client really wants, and you do this in a quiet area. Be warm and friendly to your clients and listen and make sure you're recording what 
is being consulted or what is being talked about between you and your client. Right, so as I said, we must consult with our clients, making sure that we know exactly what it is that our client desires from us. Now, natural hairstyles. Natural hairstyles originated in Africa. Some of the procedures take many hours to complete and last from six weeks to three months. You should not allow your clients or your clients can um, wear their braids up to, to six months. So sorry, do not allow them or you can tell them that they should not wear their braids past three months because three months, after three months, the hair will actually start to mat. That's if they want a lot of time. Sorry about that. So we have natural versus virgin. So natural hair, it has no chemical at all on it, okay? So the hair has never been processed. It has never been colored. It has never had any chemicals, the natural, or coil pattern of the hair is not altered, so it's never been pressed either. It's never exposed see, to thermal styling tools or anything of that such. So if your hair has never had any of those things, your hair is natural. If it has, it's and um, so forth. It's natural if it has never had any of this. So even if you color your hair, and it's no, it's that are um, no relax I was on it, yes, it is still not natural. All right, so let's move on. So you're going to consult. You're going to do your natural styles are like your braids, braiding and extension, twisting, weaving, wrapping, locking. That locks are your natural styles and your con rolls and all of those wonderful things that you do considered natural style. So your hair analysis now, you're going to look at the texture of the client's hair. And the texture refers to the diameter. And it refers to the diameter, the feel or the waist pattern that is in your hair or the client's hair. Then we have the density. This is the amount of hair per square inch. So it measures how many hair the client have. So is the hair dense, meaning the client have a lot of hair? Is the hair sparse, have a little bit? Or is it medium, she has the right amount of hair? Then we have um, the hair condition. Is the hair in good condition? Is the hair dry? Is, it, um, is the hair dry? Is the hair greasy? Is the hair brittle? Is it damaged? So this will consider the hair condition. I'll be turning off my video at this moment and we will continue. You'll be hearing my voice. So we also look at the length of the client's hair. How long is the hair? Is it enough for braiding hairstyles? You're going to determine the style that the client wants. You're going to talk about the products that you will recommend and the health of the client's skin. Sorry, health of the client's scalp. Also, the porosity of the hair and the elasticity of the hair. Now, these are some of the tools that we will be using in hair braiding. You need your board bristle brush, your um square paddle brush, your vent brush, your white tooth comb, your tail comb, your double tooth comb, finishing comb, cutting comb, pick and round teeth, blow dryer and um, pick nozzle. And you're going to need a diffuser, your, scissor, your scissors, your long clicks, your butterfly and small clicks, foot dryer and small rubber bands. Some of the products that you might use you need your waxes. This is a display of them, of the tools that you might use. So we're going to talk now about the air extensions that we use in here in here um braiding. 
Now the hair extensions that we can use, we can use human hair fiber, and we know that this extension is um it's very confusing on the market because you have different types of human hair. You have the very high-end human hair. Then you have the, the human hair that is mixed with animal hair. Then you have the human hair that is mixed with synthetic hair. So we have to, you have to do um, um, an analysis of the human hair that you will be selecting. So you need to see that on the packaging, it's labeled up. 100% human hair for you to know that this is exactly 100%. It's not mixed fiber. When you see it have mixed blend or multi fiber blend, it's really mixed with something else. The human hair is mixed with something else. Then we have the colicolon fiber. It's the most common fiber that is used in hair braiding. And this colicolon fiber has come a far away in technology. Polycolon fibers now are softer, they're more manageable. Back in the day, they used to be so hard and they would be very plastic. But technology over the years has made polycolon fiber very good and made it very high heat resistant now. Then we have our nylon or rayon synthetic fiber. It's the le it's least expensive of the synthetic hair that we'll be using in hair braiding. And the drawback for your nylon or rayon fiber um, hair is that both fibers, um, they are known to break and to be cut and to cut the natural hair. So because it is so plasticky and it's so hard, it will actually break the client's natural hair if the client keeps it in too long, repeat shampooing, and also having feet to it, such as hot blow drying, so it can be applied to the, to the rayon or nylon fiber hair, but this hair will, will break the client's hair, so you have to be very careful when using this type of synthetic hair. Then we have the yarn, and the yarn is the traditional. You know yarn where you use a mixed sweater, yes, and hats and so on. It's very inexpensive, and you will use this on your faux locks and other braiding hairstyles. You could use this to do, and you have what is called lint, and lint is a wool fiber imported from Africa. It's very matte in finish, and it comes mainly in black and brown. So you don't have a variety of color, colors in lint. It's, it's, in, it's like a cotton fiber, and it's hot, very flammable. And you know what cotton does to the hair? It actually dries out your natural hair. So you, I would not recommend lint to be worn on a long basis. Then we have yak. And yak is actually from the from um Asia and it's from the ox in Asia and this hair is shaped and processed and it blends well with human hair. Remember, I was telling you about human hair that mixed with animal hair. So this is yak that is mixed with animal hair. And yak, yak, um, yak hair helps to, to remove the shine. So it's so when it's mixed with the human hair, it's not as shiny as, as um, the other hair. So you may be wondering what is apple, and I'm going to explain apple to you. What really is apple is that apple is what you would use to um, mix the hair, or you are going to use apple to separate the hair from each other. So it's a fine board, with, with nails, with a board with fine nails standing upright, and the human hair extension is like thrown through it and combed through it to acclimate it and to detangle it and use it to blend colors together. You may, and the drawstring board is a flat board. It's like federalized and very close, fine teeth, like a sandwich. It sandwiches the human extension and it's like a book, and it's used to loosen and to distribute the hair for braiding. 
So we can move on to another slide, and this is pictures and it's telling the human hair, mostly imported from Asia. Um, Colicolon is an excellent fiber, and we have rayon, the less expensive one. It may cut or break the natural hair, and yarn made of cotton or nylon, blend and lead, wool fiber from Africa, and yak, the Tibet or Asian ox. So you get yak from that one. Now for, for braiding, we braid hair mostly dry. Yes, hair can be braided wet if you want those textured styles. Like when you do your twist out and stuff like that, you can wet it down and allow it to dry and the hair will come into that, those patterns. But what happens when you braid the hair wet is that the hair actually shrinks when braiding wet. So for straight hair, you braid, braid hair, you braid the hair dry, let the hair fall without tension. You must always shampoo the client's hair first you do not do dirty hair at all. Towel block without rubbing. Apply leave-in conditioner at all times to your client's hair because remember the hair will be plastic. It's the clear. The hair really does need moisture. And you may blow dry. You can use your parmade, your wax, or your gels to hold the hair in place. So blow dry and you know your blow dry benefits. And you're preparing it here for braiding. So the procedure for, to prepare your hair for braiding, we are going to be using so as we talked about the hair being um the hair being prepared for hair braiding. We're going to talk about the different techniques that we will use during hair braiding. So for example, we're going to do an invisible braid. If this is a three strand braid that is created with an underarm technique, so make note of that, that's an underarm technique. And an example of that is plaiting. So you're plaiting the hair, So you're plucking the client's hair, right? And the hair is sectioned in the middle. Then we have what is called the invisible braiding or the inverted braid or the French braid. And it's a three strand technique used with the overhand technique. So remember when we have that, the, the invisible where the, you're not seeing where the hair is starting from, you're using the underhand technique. Uh, sorry, the visible technique where you're actually seeing the hair um, being plucked or braided, and then we have the invisible technique where you're not seeing where the how the hair is being plucked. I will call it left hand and right hand um, braid. So we have the three strand. The hair is braided with an extension. Plot looks finished like a full lock plot, and the process takes about four hours. Two methods involve individual strands, sorry, is placed about the inch of the scalp and add long pieces to the hair to unroll it. So like your invisible cane rolls and your box braids. Then we have our dreadlock and separating the network of coils or curls texture that the hair the hair have been intertwined and mashed together. Now, if we zoom in on dreadlocks, we will know that dreadlocks has a process that it goes through. Dreadlock goes through different stages, and different stages of dreadlock will be you have you have to go go through um the mature stage. It has to go, go through several different stages before it actually becomes a lock. So you can start your dreadlocks with twists. You can start your dreadlocks with plaques. You can start your dreadlocks with um, 
You can start your dreadlocks with plaques, I mean, with rope twists. You can start it with like oil twists. You can start it and leave it to mature into to lock in until the hair start mat together and lock together. So that's for dreadlocks. There are different stages, as I said before, for dreadlocks. So the, the different stages of dreadlocks, you have the first stage, which is the beginner lock. So the hair is at a spiral, it's at a um, point, it's at a twist or plaque. Then we have the second stage of pre-lock where the hair begins to interlace or mesh. So the hair starts to separate from the unit and it starts to pop up or expand in size. And the units are no longer glossy and shine at the beginner stage. So the beginner stage of your dreadlocks the, the, lock, the hair will look glossy and shiny. And as it goes into the second stage now, the hair starts to expand and the hair does not look shiny anymore. And then we have what is called the sprouting stage. Within the sprouting stage, a bulb can be felt at the end of each interlacing continuous. So at the end of each lock, no, the hair is not really locked at this stage, but the end of each hair that flat was flat, you will feel a bulb forming. At the end, of, then we have our fifth stage, which is the final stage. This is where the hair is locked and looks at the end and it's dense and dull and does not reflect light. So the end of the hair now start looking very dull and the, the end of the hair looks, um, it not, it's not reflecting any light. During hair braiding, we have what we have different techniques. We have a single plait, we have rope twist, we also have um, French braid. So these are some techniques used in hair braiding. We have rope twist, French braids, or fishtail braids, halo braids, invisible braids, single braids what that we will call box braids. We have palm rolls, different types of palm rolls. We have invisible palm rolls. We have traditional palm rolls. We have different types of palm rolls. We have, we have the tree, tree as the, the, the plant, tree braids, and that's called interlocking. And this braid is a new way of adding hair to look longer and fuller to the client's hair. So you would do it in a form of con roll along with extension. So you're going to cut in over here and you're going to interlock hair to it so it allows the client hair to look very full and as if it has um, long length. Then we have what is called our classic textured styles and these are lovely hairstyles that we can use like our bantu knots that we call shiny bombs that we, we we can do our bantu knots and then we we will loosen it and we have a textured style like some curls and we'll get a nice afro we have the braid out set so we can roll the hair or we twist the hair place the client under the dryer we'll twist the hair wet Place the client under the dryer and then we'll do a comb up, a pull out, and you know it have a nice kinky crimpy style. Then we have our flat twist hairstyles. We have our glamour waves. We have our spiral rod sets, and these are all called textured styles. And we have our coil twist where we use the comb to twist our client's natural coil pattern to bring up that for the client. And we have our twist out style, so we double strand twist, and then we will actually we pull it out and we have a nice textured style. We also um, learn when in locking, you will also, all this I'm talking about is in our slides. So this is ways of cultivating your lock. You can double twist it. You can wrap it with a cord, you can coil it, you can do palm rolls, and this is what you would do to start your locking. You can braid it, 
and not comb or brush your hair for a period of time. And you have your comb out technique, the palm roll and braid extension. So you're, you're, and this is your phases of locking that I was talking about. The hair is soft and coiled in twists. The hair begins to interlace and mesh and a bulb can be, be felt at the end of the lock and the hair begins to regain length, and the hair locks the end so it gets dense, and there is no light reflecting through the hair. So the hair at the end will look very dull. And the procedure, we have different types of braiding. As I said before, we have visible braid procedure, rope braid procedure, fishtail braids, we have invisible braids, we have single braids, you know, a single black box braid that's so common. And now it's summer, so a lot of persons will be coming to you to get their hair braided. We have single braids with extensions, we have con rows, and we have con rows with extensions. Now, in wrapping up all that was said about this lesson, in wrapping up all that was said about this lesson, I hope that you did get the basic braiding techniques that you will need to perform services to your clients. So we have our con rolls, we have our rope twist, we have um, our plaits, our single plaits with and without extensions, we have our con rolls with or without extensions, we have our fish braid, we have halo braids, and we have locking. And also the textured styles like your Bantu knot, not sorry, like your Bantu knots, and also your twist-outs and your um, palm rolls and all the other exciting styles and techniques that you will need to perform different services to your clients. So to make sure that we recap what was taught in the lesson on hair braids. In, what is the most effective way to prepare your hair for hair braiding? The most effective way is to make sure that you shampoo your client's hair before any service that you will perform. You're going to apply a leave-in conditioner to the client's hair. You're going to blow dry that hair, effectively making sure that the hair is thoroughly dried and you are going to also add your pomades, your wax, your gels to the hair to hold it, to make sure that the hair is in good condition and the hair is moisturized. Also, as a bonus, you should also try to moisturize your client's scalp. Um, you, um, before, or you can do this before, or you can do this after your hair service. Make sure you moisturize the scalp. And what are the steps in creating a basic con roll? The steps in creating a basic con roll, as we said before, we are going to shampoo the hair, we are going to section the hair, we are going to part section the hair, then we are going to subsection the hair, and we are going to do our con roll, three strand con rolls. We can either do it visible or we can do it invisible, the underarm technique or the overhand technique. I do hope that you learned something. If there's any question, as I said before, feel free to email, to email us and we will answer any queries, any questions that you have. I, it has been, it has been lovely. I do hope you learned. I do hope you learned something, and I do hope that if you have questions, you will you will not be shy, but to pose those questions, and we'll get back to you. But before you actually go, I'm going to share with you a video that I want you to to watch, and this video is this video. Help you in this video will actually help you in gaining certification. So have a wonderful day, pleasant good evening, good night, good.
Good morning, whatever time you're watching or listening to this session. Have a wonderful time and make sure you have your notepads, taking notes and make sure that you have taken away something from this session. My name again is Kiwana Harris Johnson and I was your presenter. Thank you. Remember to watch the video right now. Thank you again. Thank you again. And feel free to ask questions. Feel free to register and feel free to get assessed. Thank you very much for participating and for being here in this recording. Thank you. Have a wonderful and pleasant night, day.